Hi everyone, and welcome to my presentation on my research paper of the dilemmas of quarantine during COVID-19, examining the increase of gender-based violence against women in Indonesia. My name is Maima Rizka Shakroza, and I'm the author of this paper. I'm an independent researcher from Yves College, London. So we'll start this paper with an introduction um, as to why I chose this topic itself. Um, mainly, the first reason was because the sexual violence has become a rising issue in Indonesia particularly. With the discussion of, last since last year, there's a discussion of from the National Commission for Women, Komnas Pumbuan, that it recorded 406,170 cases of violence against women and it's still a complex issue and can occur not only in public but also inside the homes. The issue itself um, is very systemic and there is lack of action from the government to tackle the issue itself. And since this COVID-19 pandemic, um, there's a lot of in, there's been a lot of infected numbers um, and it's still rising until today and there's been an uncertainty as to when it's gonna end uh, and due to that there's been a longer quarantine that's happening in Indonesia. So now uh, here are the numbers of gender-based violence cases against women in Indonesia. First, um, there's a data collected from LBH APIC or more known as the Legal Aid Foundation of Indonesian Women's Association for Justice. So the data is from March 16 to April 19, 2020. Um, they reported 97, 97 cases, um, which 33 are domestic violence and 30 are gender-based violence online, and the rest are sexual assault, rape, um, family conflict, um, etc. And the next is from the Indonesian Ministry of Women Empowerment and Child Protection. Um, they recorded from 1st January to 21st August 2020. They have received 3,605 report cases with 3,649 victims, and these are the adult woman, there's another separate data for the um, children. And the last um, is Komnas Prampuan. They've collected 1,299 cases from March to May 2020. Um, these data were, co um, were collected or uh, reported from, 60, from 64 different women protection institutions um, of all 27 provinces in the country. So now we move on to the research question. Um, I'm asking what are the factors impacting the rise of the gender-based violence against women during the COVID-19 pandemic in Indonesia? So I look here is the data sets um, from the data collection of 30 Indonesian news articles since February to August 2020 and I also looked through three data reports from Komnas Prumpuan that were published in May 2020, June 2020 and August 2020. And my method is basically I'm analyzing the data collections from the news articles and Komnas Prumpuan reports looking through the motives and reasoning behind the perpetrators acts towards the violence. Now we'll, we'll go to the results shown from the data collections that I analyze. Um, we, will, we will go through four points that I found um, very interesting. The first one is the financial burdens. Um, the financial burden really does play a significant role in the act of gender-based violence, especially in the domestic violence. Um, some people may be unable to work or even lose their jobs and which um, failure to provide for the family could lead to um, tension and conflict which can result in the acts of violence. 
In other cases, women are tricked into bogus employment opportunities or tasks or homeworks um, by their professors or um, by online random people or, or even friends of friends. And in return, the perpetrators usually uh, sexually assault them when they meet up or sometimes they are, they are tricked into going to another city and then end up being a end up in a sex trafficking. Um, another significant factor is through online abuse. Um, Komnas Perempuan um, report said that revenge porn was, um, was very, it occurred very frequently and within couples, which basically is um, a part the men normally um, spread intimate pictures of their partner without um, the woman consent and normally this is type of form of blackmailing and the next one is um, online harassment through social media which occurs almost every day um, and it could really intimidate the victims and scare them and really affect them um, mentally. Next is uh, confine, uh, confinement um, or being locked uh, with the same people almost every day. Um, it, could, it could be very frustrating, um, it could lead to stress and conflict can, could build up um, some may adopt unhealthy um, activities such as drinking more alcohol or drug, drug consumption, even um, uh, watching too much um, porn consumption. And that could increase to acts of violence for women uh, in the home. And since women don't make the decision, uh, making it's difficult for them to escape and the stigma uh, and the patriarchal society plays along um, which also prevents them from trying to speak out more lastly um, the lack of support system the lack of support system from family or friends um, they normally victims they don't know where who to contact who to talk to about um, uh, the experience that they experience and also sometimes they are scared to uh, report or they are not wanting to report because um, they are afraid of um, contracting COVID-19 virus and also the last is the distrust in the legal system in Indonesia. Um, sometimes it takes a very, very long process. It takes a little long process to even, to even f for the police to start um, processing the perpetrators itself.